real. Weird. Um, there were hundreds of alleged eyewitnesses that came forward to be interviewed by investigators, and many skeptics and cr- critics claimed that the fact that there are only a handful of people who actually saw any of the debris, and that it's unlikely that any of these so-called eyewitnesses are credible. Hmm. Um, and that most witnesses seem to be just parroting or kind of copying what other people had said before. The number of actual eyewitnesses that can be cooperated with is actually closer to 41, maybe five or so people having direct contact with the actual debris that was found. Wow. And so I mean, that's just crazy. Like people coming out of the woodwork, I'm sure it's making it even harder for investigators to determine what it is. Then you have the military with their story. Um, you have, people's stories changing that actually allegedly saw things. It's insane. There's so much confusion. Yeah. I'm confused. Skeptics contended that Marcel was prone to stretching the truth and would often make claims like the fact that he had been a pilot and received five medals for shooting down enemy planes. Oh shit. Not true. I kind of fish this big. <laughs> None of that ever happened. <laughs> um, this led to many, many to discount his claims and a quote from his son in the official report of the Roswell incident released by the Air Force is quoted as, quote, Jesse A. Marcel, M.D., son of late Major Jesse Marcel, 11 years old at the time of the incident, affidavit dated May 6, 1991. There were three categories of debris, a thick foil-like metallic gray substance, a brittle brown-black plastic-like material, like Bakelite, and there were fragments of what happened or what appeared to be eye beams on the inner structure of the eye beam, there appeared to be a type of writing. This writing was purple, was a purple violet hue, and it had been embossed, or and it had an embossed appearance. The figures were comprised of curved geometric shapes, had no resemblance to Russian, Japanese, or any other foreign language. It resembled hieroglyphics, but it had no animal-like characters. Ooh, so that kind of is one point for the alien side of things. Yeah. Aside from the foil, like metallic gray substance. Um, what is Bakelite? I don't, I imagine it's probably like a silicone, maybe. I'm, I'm wondering if we're not saying it right. I don't know. If it's like Bacalite. Bacalite. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to. Bacalite. So, so he's basically like, I don't know. It, it's different from, like, all of that sounds so different from everything that's been said. And she changed the game. Yeah. He's like, no, I got some more info for that ass. <laughs> for that ass. For that ass. There were several problems with most of the eyewitnesses, from information that was provided secondhand to issues with credibility uh, due to witnesses making <laughs> false and or contradictory statements to dubious deathbed confessions or accounts from elderly and easily confused witnesses. Yeah. The biggest issue that was found was that many of the witnesses came forward decades after the event, and some took even as long as 40 years. So, like Alex was saying, like I'm not sure about you guys, but if you ask me something that happened last month, I'd probably have a hard time remembering exactly. Like, people tell me, oh, you said this. I'm like, no, I didn't say that. But I, I've never said that. I probably did say that. <laughs> I just don't remember. So it's pretty concerning and problematic that they're giving statements so much later, as well as I think we all know that your memory can be influenced by time and, and the way you see things. I suggestion. Yeah. Suggestion. I think that, um, like I watched a, it was like some kind of show. I don't remember what it was, but they were showing how eyewitness accounts can be very, uh, misleading sometimes because super misleading because they don't really pay attention to everything the way that they should. Well, it's, then it's not our fault. Man. No, it's just, there's a lot going on in the world. No, it's just, it's, that's not, our brains don't work to collect that kind of detail, um, all the time, you know, yeah. um, especially when something kind of uh, shocking or scary happens. Right. Yeah. And for somebody who likes to embellish like Marcel, I think that that's problematic for sure. So the idea of alien visitation at Roswell became popularized in the 1990s due to books Movies, investigative reports, unsolved mysteries, all these things that were trying to deter- determine what actually happened in 1947. And that sensationalism of the media reporting created a tsunami of alien interest and alleged sighting. I was one of those people who was totally obsessed with the idea of alien life, Alex. Like, I don't know about you, but I used to spend hours at the library reading everything related to UFOs uh, and aliens and all that kind of stuff. Dude, one of my favorite books. 
Um, in course, man, it was the nineties. That's the, that's absolutely where everyone's head was at. Yeah. Well, I read this book called communion. I want to say it was communion. Hmm. Scariest book. Um, fiction. I didn't know. Supposed. Non-fiction? Depends on how you read things. Not according to the author. You okay. Know? Oh, so it's um, based on a true story according to him. According to him. Okay. But it, it, it you know, that's, aliens are stuff that we want to know about things like that Uh, it doesn't make any sense to look at our vast universe and think Mm -hmm. that we're the you know how narcissistic of us oh we're the only people around you know the only being or life whatever you know life force um in this vast vast universe of ours um it's it's pretty asinine to think otherwise i think it'd be pretty immature to be like oh no the you know, earth is the only place that we actually have, um, life. Yeah, I agree with you. <clears throat> I think that it's, um, uh, it's more likely that there is life elsewhere. Um, but that, I think that term could also be different. Yeah, what does that mean exactly? Is it bacteria? Right. Is it a humanoid? Is it, <laughs> there, does I'm, it have eight arms and eight eyes? Is it what we always think they are? I think the um, question is like, is, is there intelligent life? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think there might be. I think there has to be. Yeah. I think, I think that it'd be, I really do think it'd be kind of silly to be like, no, <laughs> earth is the only place. Cause if that's the case, ugh. well, and then you look, <laughs> you kind of hope that there's something better out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you look into things like, um, you know, some of the things that physicists are, are discovering related to the possibility of multiple dimensions and multiple universes occurring at the same time and all of those things that are totally fascinating and It'll above my head. Melt. Yeah. But it's crazy. Oh yeah. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. So to say that, that it's not possible, I think is, is you're right. I think it's arrogant and yeah, it, it's, I, it's super arrogant. Yeah. I, I don't think it's realistic. Well, anthropologists, Susan Harding and Kathleen Stewart assert that the Roswell story showed up clearly how the fringe theory moved from obscure and unknown to a public frenzy of conspiracy theories. And, you know, this was kind of due to the public obsession with conspiracy and cover up and repression that was rampant in the 1980s. It also led to several sensationalized books being published about the incident. There were two reports submitted by the Air Force in response to pressure from the public and legislators to determine the real story behind the mythical Roswell incident. I guess we can call it mythical, too. Yeah. I mean, this is, everyone's heard it, right? It's become urban legend. It's become urban myth. The, in the first one released in 94, it discusses the opinion that what Brazel found in 1947 was part of the mogul program, what you were Which discussing we talked about, earlier, yeah. uh, to determine if the <clears throat> USSR had in fact developed a nuclear weapon. You know, I just think that these two reports, including the one, the second one was, re- which was released, they, you know, they're both, trying to do damage control. And and this happened, you know, in the late nineties and like, I don't know if you've seen the first report, but it's like a f- giant book. Yeah. It's huge. It's a lot of info. Um, I couldn't even read it if I wanted to like, and I don't want to cause it's too long. It's a snoozer. Yeah. Um, and plus I don't know if I believe it. Like, I don't know if I believe I want to, I do. I want to. But I don't know if I believe the the government story either, though. I don't believe any of these motherfuckers. Yeah. I don't believe the guys that said they saw something, and I don't believe the guys that said that they saw nothing. I feel like sometimes people say things just for notoriety, man. Yeah. And I feel like the government might say things sometimes just to cover things up. Or just to distract you. Or just to distract. We're getting political. Uh, Move the on. second report released in 1997 concluded that the reports of recovered alien bodies were likely a combination of innocently transformed memories of accidents involving military casualties with memories of the recovery of anamorphic dummies in military programs such as 1950s Operation High Dive. Um Hmm. That's a crazy name. Do yeah. you think they just took like dummies way up high? That's what they did. Yeah. And they dropped, dropped them. them. 
<laughs> They're like, let's see what happens, guys. <laughs> let's see what let's just see what happens. This will be cool. Now, mixed with hoaxes perpetrated by various witnesses and UFO proponents. Now, the psychological effects of time compression and confusion about what events occurred explained the, the discrepancy with the years in question. So this was all quoted from the second report that was released by the Air Force? Yes. Okay. Wow. I mean, okay, maybe. I think, I think that that's probably, some of that's probably true. So the Air Force reports were not accepted by UFO enthusiasts. You don't say. <laughs> They're like, nope, <laughs> not going to cut it, slick. <laughs> that's like telling a Scientologist that Zeno's not, Zeno's not going to come for them. Um, <laughs> they're not going to believe you. Uh, Eric said that. <laughs> I'm going to get sued. I'm going to get sued. <laughs> don't come at me. <laughs> They're going to start stalking me. Um, they felt that the reports were either false or unlikely. Yeah. And on the other side, skeptics were convinced that there were not really any alien or UFO sightings at Roswell. Ever. Ever. Okay. Um, so several books were released in response to the Air Force reports, which were counter claiming what the Air Force said, but there were also re- books that were released that were supporting the claims of, of the Air Force. So there was both sides of it, but it was creating this whole buzz. Um, and despite the evidence, a growing movement of conspiracy theorists and alien enthusiasts, enthusiasts <laughs> insist that there were in fact alien encounters in Roswell in 1947. And the city, of course, has embraced this and created a campy, fun alien experience from the UFO shaped McDonald's to the towering alien at the local Duncan. Roswell has fully embraced the alien story and turned it into a boon for tourism. Have you been there? I have. I like Roswell. Yeah. It's, it's a cool spot. It's, it's weird and cool. It's like, so it's like a small town in New Mexico, but it's also got its own quirk to it. Yeah. Everything, everything is alien. It seems they have alien lampposts. Yeah. It's awesome. It's kind of cool to walk around there. And the the museum is fantastic. Um, it's in the people there are awesome. So I think we should like do a Dos Pequeños trip to the UFO festival next year. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. We can like bring people that are listening to the show with us and not a bad idea. Do a live stream. Do a live show. Shit. That'd be cool. All right. That's on the list guys. Unless you don't want to, you can email us at spookenos at gmail.com if you don't want to. Don't don't, don't don't even no don't even know <laughs> so you, keep you know what forget it <laughs> you're already being disrespectful to us <laughs> come for come for the uh come for the paranormal stay, stay for, for the, the abuse appropriate giggling stay for the abuse <laughs> Um, oh shit the excitement Sorry. and myth around aliens would not calm down either. When in the 1990s, someone released a video of an alleged alien autopsy. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And when I saw it, I was like, legit, this is real. It looked real. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is totally real. This is um, this is finally shared for everyone to know about. It's the truth. It's out there, man. Yeah. Um, so that was allegedly filmed in reaction or in relation to the Roswell incident. And it created a huge uproar uh, and excitement in the world. As it was shown on every local news station around the world. Oh, it's awesome too. It was, it looks legit. They it, did a great It job. looks like a secret covered up video of government experiments oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Or it's like what you expect it to be. So the creator of the film, last name was Santilli, eventually admitted that it was staged, but claimed that it was all based on actual footage, oh, cool. which of course is lost. But he saw it. But he saw it. <laughs> so he made a show out of it. Cool story, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so as time went on, it became increasingly difficult for the government to keep a lid on top secret aspects of what happened, which is why they released the information about Project Mogul, which was not something that was supposed to be public knowledge, especially during the Cold War. Eventually, the government started releasing some of the classified files related to UFOs and alien sightings. Even up to this year, there were some new files that were released. Yeah. I haven't checked them out yet. I've, well, I've seen video. I've seen the video from the uh, uh, Air Force or it was Navy. It was the, um, Shit. But they're, they're these little Tic Tacs they watch flying around. Really? And uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. Huh. Um, so this has done little to quell the excitement and rumors about the Roswell incident. Believers will still believe and skeptics will still skeptic. Yeah. 
Yeah. Haters going to hate. I'm a, I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic. I'd like to be proven um, wrong. I want to believe. Honestly, I do. I want to believe that something has come and visited us, and I want to believe that there is life outside of this planet. Yeah, I I really do believe there's something else on this planet. Do I believe that maybe aliens visit us as much as we want them to visit us? No. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of the things we see can be explained away sometimes. Do you think if aliens have 